Wow, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Look, he who habitually follows Jesus Christ shall be uh, honored in the kingdom of heaven. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17, it said, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. The, you know what the lust thereof? That's the allurement of the world. Luring us in, into anything but following Christ. And then it said, But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is talking about the one who keeps on keeping on. Keeps on keeping on doing the will of God. Not periodically. The will of God is that you would attend church on Sunday. But that's not all the will of God is. The will of God is following God, following what Jesus says on a continual basis. On a continual basis. Day and night. Every day. Every day and every night. Not just, there are those that say, well, I'm a good Christian. I go Sunday morning, I go Sunday night, I go Wednesday. And I even come to Sunday school. Wow. Boom, 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 boom. Praise me. No. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's all about serving Him 24 sevens. Not just coming to church, not just doing this. When you come out of church, when you go eat dinner, do you talk to the waitress? You're in a restaurant. Do you say to the waitress, Waitress, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? I have a little pamphlet right here that says that you can go to heaven when you die. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. And you can go to heaven. Then there is a following. That following is, is to fellowship with others who are Christians. That is to go to the place of worship where you can find out what God would have for you, your life, so that you can follow it. I, I've got a little thing before me I've been studying. It says, make me captive Lord. I study things, a lot of things. This is out of the 1800s. Make me captive Lord. And that's what I am. I am a captive. It said, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 1 John 2 and 17. And that's what I just read. And look, when Jesus Christ is king in your life, when he's king in your life, you will naturally want to fulfill the king's desire. And the king is the king of God. So you'll want to fill the desire of God. Our Lord himself lived all his life uh, in the will of God, the Father. He said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6 and 38. And, uh, and as the master, so will the servant be. If you're following your master, you shall be like him. And if you're going to be like him, he can use you. If you're not like him, he can't use you. So you need to be like him to be used. Uh, uh, when he taught his disciples to pray, this is what his faith was. Thy will be done. He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If God is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever, the least we could do is follow him a few little days on this earth. Just a few days will soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. My friend, if you're following your own desire, 
just to please your own self, just to please your self will, and, and all of that. You know, you could not be, you don't have to be out drinking, lying, cheating, stealing to de be denying God. Uh, your place on Sunday is in church, not on the river fishing, not in the woods hunting, not out just swimming, doing pleasure, just riding around the country, going to see what you can see. What you're supposed to see is what the preacher says, and then if you want to ride in the country, you can ride in the country. But first you need to do what God says, and he says, no, forsake not the assembling together of yourself as a matter of some is. If you're, for, you're, if you're forsaking to assemble together, then you're breaking God's word. If you break his word, you're outside the gate. I don't want to be outside the gate. I want to be inside the gate. I want to be where, where, where I'm where God says, you're standing on holy ground. And that's what I want to do. Listen, he taught his disciples to say this prayer to them. In the will of God, what is done in heaven, so it may be done in the earth. He held out before them the golden vision of being doers of the will of God. Being doers, not just sayers. It's one thing to say that you're in the will of God. It's another thing to do the will of God. Uh, uh, to this, as sons of God. Now, if we're sons, we should do what the Father wants us to do. Uh, they were called, even the psalmist, long before, said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is written on my heart. Psalm 40, 7 and 8. So Jesus did always the things that pleased the Father. We see him as a boy of twelve in the temple saying, How is it that you sought me? Talking to his mother, his, his physical mother. He's talking to her. And he's saying, You saw me. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now he'd been with his mother twelve years at this point. And, and she should have already, even at 12 years old, seen that he was God's son. She knew he was. She knew she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. She knew that this was a miraculous birth. This conception was miraculous. And, and, and although the silent years in Nazareth, all the way to Bethlehem, to Calvary, there was no controlling motive one supreme delight to do the will of God. Jesus was not seeking to control by himself. He was seeking to bring people to see he was doing the will of his Father and he wanted you to be follow his example. <coughs> he, Jesus himself, does not want your worship. He wants you to worship the Father through him. To worship the Father God through him. That's what he wants. He worshiped the Father. He wants you to worship the Father. The only way you can worship the Father is through him. Now the life which Jesus Christ is king is one of the, of, that sets itself to follow the same goal. To love what he loves. To do what he commanded. To shun what he hates. This is God's perfect plan for his children. If we are his children, his perfect plan is us to shun the world, shun what he hates, and to follow him. This is what we pray for when we ask, thy will be done on earth. His will be done on earth. How's it going to be done? It's going to be done in us. It's going to be done through us and in us. People, human beings. God's children. It's going to be done in us and through us. If it's done at all on this earth, it's going to be done that way. A, a life of blessing is love, lived out in the will of God in the way he chooses, in the path of his directing. Hey, God has a perfect plan for every man. He's got a perfect plan for me. He's got a perfect plan for you. 
every one of his children that are in the redeemed family. What is the redeemed family? Those who have said, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. I become part of the redeemed family. And I'm discovering bringing the plan into full fruition. In the essence of life eternal. I'm going to be, I have life eternal. And uh, we embody the will of God. George uh, Matheson sings a song, or sang a song. This is 1800 reading I'm doing here. And uh, he sang a song. He said, My will is not mine own till thou hast made it thine. If it would reach in the monarch's throne, it must be crowned rain. It only stands unbent. Amend the uh, uh, clashing strife when on thy bosom it has lent and found in thee its life. Now in the words of, of uh, the language of the 1800 people it meant exactly what it said and believe it or not I, I, I do a lot of study of, of things in the past did you know that they had a fifth grade test uh, back in early America I'm talking about the colonies were still here they had a fifth grade test that you could lay out today in any college in the United States and 99% of all the college students would fail that fifth grade test. Why? Because we have gone that far away from what real education is and what God wanted us to be. And in those days, the Bible was the main reader but the mathematics were simple with the help of God. And when we leave God out, things become difficult. As long as God was there. Our part is giving ourselves over to God. And if we'll do that, He, and, and leave ourselves entirely in His hands. And that's what we need to do. We need to bring wholly His uh, Joannes or the book of John what John says for us to be and uh, there was a German mystic preacher and uh, he counsels us as well if you cannot be as entirely his as you would fain be be his as much as can be attained unto whatsoever ye are be that entirely and truly. And what you cannot be, that be contented not to be. In a uh, sincere spirit of regeneration of God's sake in him. So shall ye, pre-adventure, uh, possess more of God in lacking than in having. It is supreme dedication that our Lord Jesus demands. The evangelist Luke tells of his dedication. When the days drew near for him to be received up, he set his face to go toward Jerusalem. Nothing could hold him back. In holy dedication, he moved forward to the coronation of of Calvary so may we do also those are those words are, they pull you here and there they jerk you around you say brother Peter how do you understand that reading I understand that reading because I understand the Bible I understand these guys that learned by the Bible learned how to use words and mince words and put them together that mean the most and this, this uh, uh, Johannes or John, the guy that's following John, and uh, he was a German mystic. Yet he pens down words 
that are Christ-like words. And so uh, the emphasis, of course, is the petition. Thy will be done. That's a petition to God. Thy will be done in my life. I want your will done, God, today. My Father, first I'm praying to my Father in heaven. And then I say, Thy will be done. In my life. That's where I want His will done, in my life. And so, uh, the word will must be done. But too frequently, we hear this theme uh, treated as though only response to the will of God is one of fatalistic or stoic uh, regeneration to the adversary. Uh, there is regeneration at the heart of this prayer. By listening to this, my, my, the word my, uh, in order to uh, become allied with his will, we have to put our will in his will. My will be in his will. And to, the, and to um, the adversity. Listen to this man here, Samuel Rufford did, once shouted in the midst of a series of painful trials, Praise God for the hammer, the file, and the furnace. Adversity has its place in the divine program. <laughs> Woo. Oh, Jesus faced all of them. He faced that, the adversity. He faced that anvil. He faced that trial. He faced that furnace. He faced all that, like the, the boys uh, that were put in the furnace in the Old Testament and, and, and walked through the fire. And, and they said the Bible has a great deal to say about suffering. And most of the encouraging Job knew all about the graving tools of pain. And he yielded his soul under the hand of God as under a faithful creator. Wow. And God used the suffering of his servant Job. Even as he still uses suffering, which is... Uh, penalty and faithfully undergone patiently excuse me and faithfully undergone for the sake of Christ when we choose to suffer affliction with people of God who can be sure that God numbers all of the crisis and the groan cries and groans and tears of his servants but that is only a part of the mighty plan and the purpose of God wow Yet having said this, we must again emphasize the petition we are taught by our Lord is one that leads to action. We pray that something might be accomplished. Thy will be done. Remember, we're in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. That's accomplishment in doing of His will. He goes out to prove what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. And to do with joy. It is here we face the crisis of our, all our life. How shall we prove his will? By doing our own will? Or the will of God, the Father Almighty. For the true Christian, there can only be one standard. The will of God. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. Nothing else. We come to the point of decision where we say as a young undergraduate wrote in his daily journal some years ago, Lord, anything. In other words, we want nothing but what God wants. He willed to will the will of God. He went out to do it. The hymn of Christendom are full of this pure desire. We impoverish ourselves greatly when we neglect those songs. Let the praises sung to God by Paul and Silas in the inner prison and heard to other prisoners, so do the song of faith and, and, and the sweetness of our blessing 
and help. I can't say the man's name, but it's Trista Jean sings of the love of God whose height and depth no man knows, and as he celebrates this, his lungs are fresh. Listen, I can't sing a lick, but I do love to hear somebody sing, singing in the Spirit. When they sing in the Spirit of the Lord, it is important. The, and this is what uh, Tristan sings. Tis mercy all that thou hast brought my mind to seek her peace in thee. Yet while I seek but find thee not, no peace my wandering soul shall see. Oh, when shall all my wanderings end and all my steps toward thee would tend? Wow. When you're tending only to thinking about what Jesus would have you to do and God would have you to do, then you're in the right place. This is the hunger of the soul. Hungering after God. A hunger that will never be satisfied without God. You cannot ever, ever in this world be 100% satisfied without God. God is the fulfiller of satisfaction in life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. That's the word of God. The only way you'll ever be satisfied is when you're hungering and thirsting after the will of God. Are you willing? Are you willing to put yourself in that place and hunger and thirst after the will of God? D.L. Moody. Well, let me see. There is a thing beneath the sun that strives with thee my heart to shun. Ah, tear it thence and reign alone, the Lord of every motion there. Then shall my heart from earth be free when it hath found repose in thee. Written back in the 1800s in that language, but so exact to what the scripture says. D.L. Moody also proved this and thought the secret of the countless others. One day he had heard a man state, the world has yet to see what God can do with man fully yield to his will. And Moody said, by the grace of God, I will be that man. Wow. God always uses a man who is willing to stand in the gap, a man he may send, who will go forth on the business of his God, God and King. God grant that he may find in us, especially in me, the ready response and the absolute dedication to the will of the Father, just as the Son Jesus did. And that will is our peace. Hey, <laughs> you can have perfect, perfect peace in the middle of the storm. I lost my wife in April to cancer. I lost my sister last week to cancer. I lost my father and mother a couple of years ago. I've lost five brothers and, and uh, four brothers and a sister. And I have one sister left. And maybe she'll live a while, maybe she won't. You say, Brother Peter, have you been in the fire? Yes, I've been in the fire. Yes, I've seen in the fire. But I also have seen God in the fire. And he was with me just like he was with them boys in the fire, in the furnace. The Son of God in the furnace with those boys. And he's there with me. If I'm in the furnace, he's there. I don't have to be fretted. So D.L. Moody proved the thought and the secret and the countless others in the day he had a, a man state that the world has yet to find that man. He said, I'm going to be that man. And Moody said, by the grace of God, I will be. And used the man willing to stand in the gap and send forth 
the business of his God and King. God grant that he may find us in the ready response, absolute dedication to the will of the Father. And that will be where our peace is. If we're in dedication to the Father. Each moment draw from earth away. My heart that lowly waits to call. Speak to my innermost soul. And say I am thy love. Thy God. Thy all. To feel thy power. To hear thy voice. To taste thy love. Be all my choice. And this was uh, Gerard. Uh. Uh, Trestegene and it was translated by John Wesley and so there I am again back in the 1800 era and uh, uh, reading and studying by some of God's pure hearted men that really knew how to follow God and John Wesley did know how to follow God and did and there's a great movement out here today that he started. And it still continued and will continue until the Lord comes. So, where are you today? What is your plans today? Are your plans to serve Jesus today? Or is it to go out and serve yourself in your own way? If you don't have any other way, uh, write, write a track. I wrote this track. You write one. Write one like this. This is called a track. It's a piece of paper. It has Bible verses in it. It tells you how to be saved. And then put your stamp on it. And then uh, we're using this at our church. Now it has the church. Our stamp is on it. The church. When I first made it, uh, it was a uh, tall cross mission. I had a mission. I called it Tall Cross Mission. I had a 60-foot cross made out of steel out there in the yard, and I called it Tall Cross Mission. Uh, I used Source of Light material from uh, a place in Georgia. You look up Source of Light, you can find their material. And I put men uh, all the way up to college level in Source of Light work. And that was back in the 70s. And uh, I myself, without an education, eighth grade, uh, a flop out. The only reason the principal graduated me, he said, next year you'll want to marry the teacher if you hang around here. So I'm going to get you out of here. So uh, the, the same week that I graduated school, I went up down and signed up for the Navy. And that was the eighth grade. So you can see. I was old enough to be a man in the 8th grade. So I just didn't get it. But God has blessed and gave me a Bible education. So I have a Bible education. And you can write one of these here tracks yourself. Put it on a piece of paper. Find out somebody who will print it for you. Either that or you do one page. Do three on a page of paper. Take your page of paper and you do uh, three of these or two, whatever your paper will hold, and you do two of these and then you copy it. And I've done this. And then you cut it out with a pair of scissors, a paper cutter. Get your little cheap paper cutter, go to the uh, uh, Goodwill or somewhere and find you one of them paper cutters or go buy a new one if you can afford it, which I never could. I always had to buy everything second hand. So, and cut your tracks out. Cut them out and then pass them out. And you can do them two-sided by doing your paper on one side, then fold it, turn it over and keep it the exact same dimension and do it on the other side. And there you got a two-sided track. And then you fold it up. And then you can pass it out. Or you can find the Track Society. If you're telephone smart, ask your phone for where the Track Society is. I uh, forget right now exactly where it is, but I think everything is in, uh, I can't say it, can't get it in my mind now, but it's the best place it seems like in the United States on the earth to find gospel stuff, tracks and things, and uh, good godly people in that town. So you can find a place where you can get tracks from the Track Society, American Track Society, and they'll send you a whole box of them. 
and you can pass them out and you can start there that's one place to start leaving them in the men's room when you go there and if you're a woman in the woman's room leaving them around passing them to people uh, getting yourself opened up by talking to people by saying uh, this is the way I'm walking in it and you can walk in it too and all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. Get in the Bible and ask him to show you what it says and start learning. The next thing you know, there you are. You're on the way and you're ready to go. Well, we're going to close this one and at a short amount of time. Uh, which Oh, I say a short amount of time, which is 30 minutes, by the way. And we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.